Create in us clean hearts, O God, and put new and right spirits within us. Do not cast us away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. And sustain in us, O Holy Spirit. Let us worship the God. Let's stand and sing together. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Knowing that 
there are needs out there. So that not everyone has everything that they need and left it into our hands to take care of those needs. So take these gifts, Lord, use them for your glory and for the needs of this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Please remember to wear your mask. My
Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me will not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. Words of love and words of grace. Thank you, Thank you, God. God. Thank you Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thrust into the world. Thrust into the world. You know, um, as I was, as I think about discipleship, and we talk a lot about discipleship in the Methodist Church, don't we? Uh, as I think about discipleship, I, I thought about a comparison between discipleship and soldiering. And I know that's an uncomfortable analogy for some because soldiers are generally associated with violence and, and with uh, war and that sort of thing, preparing for war. But I'll, I'll say that there, I think there are some really important parallels. I was in the army and, and that helps me to understand it. Um, you know, when you think about the way a drill sergeant uh, relates to his soldiers, whoever they may be, you can definitely see a similarity to the way Jesus is just, Jesus relates to his disciples. Not, not a perfect metaphor, but, but it's, it's one that is worth exploring. Uh, and I, I'm going to kind of give a little defense for the military as I, as I go through this. I, uh, I, I spent three years in the, in the U.S. Army, uh, three years in one month, I think. I got out early because they were downsizing. But, uh, but of that three years, the most intensive time in the military is the first 14 to 16 weeks, what they call basic training. And then you have your, your particular training for your MOS, your military occupational specialty, whatever it may be. And uh, that's, you know, for, I was a grunt, I was a, a foot soldier. So it was intensive training. So of that three years, it's that first, really that first 10, 12, 14 weeks, that is the most intense time of your life. And, uh, you know, there are movies that kind of describe the experience. Uh, some come to mind, Full Metal Jacket was a very, very good, powerful depiction of what it looks like. Uh, to be in basic training. I wasn't a Marine, but for Marines, that was pretty intense. Um, there's, you know, Private Benjamin on a lighter note, Stripes also on a lighter comedy note. Wasn't really that funny uh, being in there. Um, and um, I would say that those describe it pretty well. But one thing that I think is not always realized about service in the Army, service in the military, and that is this, your drill sergeant really does love you. You'll never hear a drill sergeant say that. <laughs> I love you, soldier. You, no, you'll never hear that. If you ever say, I love you, drill sergeant, you're in big trouble. <laughs> don't even go there. Don't even go there. But know that deep down that this is true. This is true. And you go through really 14, 16 weeks of hell. I mean, it is physically, mentally, emotionally demanding stuff. I mean, you are, um, they, they used to have a saying, they, they tear you down, build you up. Basically, you know, if you come in with any pride, you come in with any arrogance, 
it's gone very quickly because your drill sergeant will make sure that it is stripped away from you um, in, in, in various ways. And yet, you know, at, at the end of all of this, after 14 or 16 weeks on like this, you finally get to the point where you graduate. There is a graduation ceremony. You are actually finishing your basic training and you're actually going to be deployed to a unit somewhere in the army. And on that last night, the eve before your ceremony at 0800 in the morning or whatever it is, um, the drill sergeant walks into the barracks. And the automatic response, of course, is somebody, the first person to see the drill sergeant yells, at ease, everybody has to pop into the parade rest location or, or position. But then immediately on this particular occasion, the eve of our graduation, the drill sergeant comes in, somebody yells, at ease, and almost immediately the drill sergeant just says, as you were. And you notice that the drill sergeant is not wearing his smoking the bear hat. I mean, he's, it's been like a fixture on his head for 14 weeks. He's all, you always see him with that hat. But now he's come into your barracks. He said, as you were taking the hat off, and I, my, my bunk was a little, little ways back, but I could see, wow, he's smiling. The drill sergeant's smiling. I haven't seen him smile ever. You know, that's just the drill sergeant is... And he's conversing. There's dialogue going on with a few guys up there. And the crowd is gathering. More and more soldiers are going up there. Drill sergeant's sitting down somewhere, just chatting and smiling with folks. And all of a sudden, it's like you're being treated like a human being rather than a maggot. You know, you're, you are a, a, an actual person. And he's, he's listening and dialoguing. And um, what he communicates at that time what this drill sergeant communicated was the reason that they are absolutely so tough on you. The reason is that a lot of them have seen combat experience. A lot of them have lost friends. A lot of them have dealt with warfare, been in battle or something like that. And they know that for you to survive, you have to be as best trained as you possibly can be from that kind of an environment. So all the yelling, all the shouting, all the drills, all the exhausting work that they do, they do it because they love you. And they wouldn't say that, but they do. Uh, and, and I kind of sense from reading in the scripture, particularly in John's Castle, that this, this love is the essence of our relationship with Jesus. It's the essence of any relationship with Jesus is a strong love, love to the point of caring extremely for your life, ex of caring totally for your life, of, of just wanting to give everything to ensure that you're okay. And we're, we're in the midst of the farewell discourse in John's gospel. Jesus is consoling his disciples. You know, I'm going to be gone. And when I'm gone, this is what I need you to do. And he starts today's passage that, that Tom read by saying, um, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. A drill sergeant would just simply say, keep my commandments. But Jesus, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He doesn't say... If you keep my commandments, you're going to love me. Uh, if you do what I say, I'll love you or anything like that. That love is unconditional for God, for, for us, Christ, for us. That love is unconditional. But if we love Jesus, it's just a natural follow-up that we are going to do what he says. Do what he says. Follow his instructions and all like that. So I see this parallel between um, Jesus and a drill sergeant, but it, it's also a sense of mission. It's also a sense of mission. And I think that one of the struggles that we face in the church today is really centering in on that mission, really, really centering in on that mission and living into it fully, um, which really involves transformation. And we, we talk about that in our book studies, uh, Richard Moore's book study and others. It involves that kind of transformation where we are 
able to love at such a at such a profound and deep level. Um, and the way that we get there is through Jesus. And last week we read that famous little line, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And um, it's been used in terrible ways by, by people to make it seem like, you know, you can't have faith in any other uh, tradition or anything like that. That's not what Jesus is saying. But he's speaking to his disciples and saying, if you want to know how to, to reach the Father, know that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And we are Christians, so that is our way. Christ is our truth, Christ is our life. And when you read today's passage, it can be very confounding because there is this, there is this triangulation going on between Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Actually, it's actually four ways because you add us into the mix too. Uh, you know, I'm in the Father, the Father is in me, the Spirit, and I'm with this. And if you love me, I love you. Kind of reminded me of that uh, turtle song, you know, Imagine Me and You and You. <laughs> it's like this, this whole thing of being in one another and being in Jesus Christ. And to be in Jesus Christ is to, is to know that love is to know that in the intensity of that love. And when you know that love, you do know the Father. You know, so Jesus says, just as the Father is in me, and, uh, you know, you, you're in me, then the Father is in you, uh, and then the Holy Spirit. And that's where I'm going to very briefly talk about that, the Holy Spirit um, in, in John's Gospel. It's not... Uh, it's not a Pentecost experience the way it is in, in Luke's gospel or in the book of Acts where, uh, you know, Holy Spirit comes down and there's a great wind and everybody's speaking in tongues and I'm like this. In John's gospel, it's just the resurrected Jesus just simply breathes on the disciples. The spirit, he breathes into them. And that spirit of love, it just so guides us and directs us. And it, it leads us to keep Jesus' commandments. It leads us into that, um, to, to actually turn the other cheek, to actually love our enemies, pray for those who persecute us, to do all those things. It, it's just the natural follow-up to all of that, that love that is so deep coming into us. And when that love does come into you, it's, it, it really is, in my experience, there is a bit of a tension because I tend to be like stuck in the mud sometimes. I just want to sit down and observe and let things go on and listen to the news and watch television and just kind of see everything from a distance. But that, that spirit kind of prompts me to do things, to get up and act at ways, to to go and, and, and serve in this way, to go and visit this person, to get, pick up the phone and call that person, to do these sorts of things. To struggle sometimes because I, I think I am lazy at heart in many ways. So it's, but it doesn't let you sit. The, 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 the spirit is that impetus that drives you on mission. And so when we, when we as Christians are, are harbors of the Holy Spirit, when we make that move and we invite Christ to dwell in us and the Spirit of God to dwell in us, we are like soldiers in a way. We are driven on mission. We are, you know, we see an objective and we see that you can't, you can't turn down a mission in the, in the army. You can't say, ah, oh, this looks a little too hard. Um, I think I'll pass on that. You can't do it. You can't do it. And, you, and, and, and a, you can't do that as a Christian either when, when the Spirit dwells in you. Not because there's somebody holding a whip over you and saying, you got to do this. You know, if you want salvation, you better do this. No, Jesus just starts off by saying, well, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. And then that's the test, isn't it? That's the rub, isn't it? Do we love Jesus? Well, are we keeping his commandments? That's... The, the scale we use. That is the, the way we assess ourselves. Are we doing that? And so 
because we had technical difficulties, I'm going to keep this message short. Let's just dwell on that. Let's just dwell on that focus that if we do love Jesus, we will keep his commandments. And if you are having issues keeping the commandments, well, I wouldn't say go and get busy, um, you know, go and do something because, you know, it's improper. But take a look at the relationship that you have with Jesus and ask yourself, well, why am I not motivated? What, what is keeping me from being motivated? Maybe I need to build that love. Maybe I need to nurture that relationship with Jesus. And uh, I've been harping on that through Lent. It's, it's not a time to give up chocolates so that you can take it up again the day after Easter or on Easter, the chocolate bunnies and everything. But no, it's, it's, to, it's to nurture that relationship with Jesus Christ. Extra time in prayer, extra time in meditation, extra time in scripture. Just, just build that, work on it, so that you can honestly just simply respond in love to Jesus and just to his commandments because that's what he tells us to do. We are thrust into the world because we have come to the church. We have become part of the body of Christ. And when we do that, there's really no alternative to being thrust into the world. And, uh, and as your compassion grows, as the love of Christ grows in you, your love for the world grows as well. Love for everybody and anybody. I mean, John's gospel is famous. Everybody knows John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believed it should not perish for eternal life. If what John is also saying here, if we dwell in Jesus, then the Father dwells in us and the Spirit dwells in us and we're all a big one happy family, then we so love the world that we give ourselves to the world and that we go and take what is what is wrong with this world, the the greed and the selfishness and the inconsideration and the and the the injury and the violence and the the uh, the hatred and all of this and we actually become that bomb that just says no this that's this is not God's way this is you know this is the world John does that he distinguishes the disciples from the world but. I think we all kind of have an idea of the ways of the world that John is talking about when he says that. And he says that, you know, this is, this is who Jesus is, uh, and, and this is who we are. We are instruments of love. Just, uh, I want to leave with one, just one quote. Um, it's from a book. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Oh. Ah, oh, there it is. Thank you. Um, this is a book that John loaned me. One of the many books that John Donlin loaned me. Um, and, and this one, fortunately, is quick. I almost finished it. But, but uh, on, this is a, a it's called uh, Living with Loss, Healing and Hope. It's a Jewish perspective by Rabbi Earl Rollman. Well, friends, a Jewish perspective is not foreign to a Christian perspective. It is, you know, we share perspectives in many ways. So this is a uh, a beautiful little little excerpt. It's called Community and Support. It says, uh, Rabbi Mosh Lee Sasover recounted a conversation he overheard between two villagers. Tell me, friend Ivan, do you love me? I love you deeply. Do you know, my friend, what gives me pain? How can I know that? If you do not know what gives me pain, how can you say that you truly love me? Yes, the Sasover concluded, to love, truly to love, means to know what gives pain to your friend. To know what gives pain to your friend. When I think of the, 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 um, the evils of the world, the struggles of the world, I don't look at them as so much as a, as a, a diabolical devil of course, but I see it as, a, as, a, as an illness. I see the evil as, uh, as a failure to, to learn what love is, to really know what love is. And so 
my pain, I feel pain for those who, who do act in ways that they, they really don't know what the pain of others is, that they don't know what pain they're causing others. But that's something that we heal as well, that we as Christians are called to heal as well, to be witnesses to Christ's love and to do healing in the world. Let us pray. Lord God, um, <clears throat> for whatever reason, um, we are among the people who, uh, to whom you have instilled this spirit, this Holy Spirit. It's a spirit that doesn't always make us comfortable. It's a spirit that sometimes prompts us in ways that uh, we find difficult to go. But it is your spirit, and it is a spirit that is uh, grounded in love. So, Lord, we ask that that spirit would be nurtured in us. We ask that we would nurture it in one another. And that we, as a, as a church, would, would truly hold one another in love as we hold those people who are outside of this place in love. Help us to know that um, love does require a lot of action. Help us not to be lazy. Help us not to be um, withholding our love or withholding our service. But help us, O oh Lord, to find a way that we can give all that we can because that's where our joy is. That's where we find joy. And that's where we find peace. When we are truly living in you and you in us and the Father in us and the Father in you and the Father in the Spirit and everything together. <laughs> we just pray, oh Lord, that uh, we, would be, uh, we would be a harbor for your Spirit as we are a harbor for your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, now it's bite. <clears throat> um, us to join in the closing again. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. If you would like to, please rise. <clears throat> Smile upon you, give you peace. Amen. Please, uh...